By the way, like the, this Cloud9 team, they don't practice that much, or they don't practice at all, actually, yeah. against the North American Cloud9 team, but they do have the same analysts. Now, he doesn't give them the exact same strategies to work with because they're different teams and they have different styles. Sure. But similar ideas are going to be brought up in the yeah. discussions with that analyst. So same thing with this rocket might happen. Yeah, and you've got a team who's winning the North American LCS right now, right? And it's They're doing something place. right. They're clearly doing something right, right? Number one team twice in a row so far. Figure it's going to be some useful information to listen to. The ban does come through onto Lee Sin, so Ko's not going to get that champion here. Final ban from C9E is the LeBlanc away, and first pick, Kha'Zix right. comes in, so and I can yeah, deny that. I like that, because I, I kept on mentioning those two. I like this stealing it away, um, only having to use one ban on jungle and being able to take Kha'Zix away. Mm -hmm. Uh, pretty good opener here from NIP, I have to say. The C9E, we think about, are they going to be aggressive? Elise is still available, of course, with Kha'Zix grab. There's no rush in grabbing your jungler here. Um, it's not really the Zoro Zero play style. Mm -hmm. He's been really actually bruiser heavy so far in this season. Nuke Tuck, I suppose, is a player who could play Kha'Zix. He's generally had a very wide champion pool. Or I guess deep is the word we use, but it was a big, uh -huh. big Fizz player back in Season 3. Like, Either way, you get more volume. Yeah, no matter what, the volume's increased. That's all we care about is the volume of champions. Shogath makes your champion pool the largest. Simply just is the biggest impact of individual champion. Teemo doesn't increase their champ pool very much. But it's going to be Shivana for Odwamna, also the uh, Liliana for the early dive. But NIP already have their pick. Yeah, lightning fast lock-ins going according to plan here. Uh, Thresh is always a very high priority, so not really a surprise. And Freeze, uh, very, very happy to be on Lucian. We saw the outplay already, the replay of it. Yeah. They get ganked, they get first blood. That should never happen. That's mm -hmm. definitely a mistake by the other team, as well as it just being played so well of course. by this bottom lane. So having the bottom lane on this confident combo here, mm -hmm. it, I think is, uh, is not looking that great for Cloud9. So we'll see if C9E can make something happen then for themselves. The hover on Sivir. Hmm. Sivir Lucian's a fairly tough matchup. It is winnable. You can spell shield the Q, but it's a bit difficult. Uh, but that already gets locked in, so we got a Sivir lane. So they're talking about NIP likes extending laning phase. Not yeah. a lot of people in Europe do the 2 vs 1 switch. Sivir Leona could do a 2 vs 1 switch. They've actually locked in Rise and Shivana. Mm -hmm. So probably the mid lane Rise and then Shivana side lane. Shivana can jungle pretty well. A two versus one switch would not be bad for Cloud9 if they want to try and throw NIP off. Yeah. Maybe since there's not that much of this two versus one um, he was talking about over in Europe, then they want, want to throw him off that way. Well, look at the difference, though, for NIP. They certainly got a very early game focused team because you've got Twisted Fate running around. Oh, Rumble. Make... Yeah, and Rumble, right? Uh -huh. Rumble spikes like 9 to 13 in levels. Like it's, He's not the crazy end game carry like Rises. You got Twisted Fate, who's also only got two big damage skills. Was changed a bit in 4.5. Easier to lock in a gold card then use it a bit later on, but you've got a team that's like trying to make plays early. Yeah, and I also really like this last pick, Twisted Fate. He's good defense if there is an early lane swap. Mid laners with wave clear are very important in this day and age. Twisted Fate has that pre six, plus then post six, he can get around the map very quickly since it's all about rotations towards the mid game. It's a great champion to have in your pool. I do like this setup here from NIP. It looks like they're trying to get the first uh, jump and catch Cloud9 off guard. Yeah, well, Switch C9E, speaking of off guard, yeah. switch the whole thing around. Jungle Shivana, actually, the rise of the top laner. Ari comes in for the matchup. Ari has assassination potential on yeah. Twisted Fate. Oh, yeah. So that right there is kind of a reaction uh, to Twisted Fate. She can easily kill him post six as if Nuke Dog is not careful. Or he's not employing his juke duck skills. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be fun though. Like we've kind of all but forgotten about jungle Shivana. It always is in the back of my mind anytime it gets picked up. I'm mm -hmm. like, I wonder if it'll go jungle there. But so you've got an interesting rise matchup there. Rise versus Rumble. Right? Like it's weird because basically C9E managed to get a double counter pick mm -hmm. this way. Because they locked in Ari last, of course, knowing it's against TF. They picked up the rise, making it look like it was going to be a mid laner, actually, unless Unless NIP knew like the likeliness of Jungle Shivana. And so basically C9E got to say, okay, well, they get to determine their lanes completely at that point and say, yeah, let's send Rise up, let's send Shivana on jungle, let's yeah. send Ari here. And even though they did not get Elise and or Kha'Zix, mm -hmm. they did not give up the plan of jungle invades. Shivana can build a uh, Feral Flare. She's yeah. very strong with it. She doesn't need mana, so she doesn't even sacrifice anything by not going Spirit Stone. She al already likes to farm very hard. Mm -hmm. She's a quick clearing jungler, and she likes to counter jungle very hard. 
So they can still do the same thing. If they can get some nice uh, vision in early, then Shivana can actually do some good uh, work in the jungle. Well, let's see. It's going to be a whole bunch However, of However, her ganks uh, yeah. are definitely going to be great. lackluster. Ganks aren't great. So it's probably going to be Ko looking to actually just fight the other jungler mm -hmm. because um, then at least the other team won't get strong ganks either. Okay, so Shivana versus Kha'Zix, the jungle matchup. There's a TP for Odwamna, C9E's top lane rise. But Zoro Zero is running Ignite for lane dominance. So a lot of differences between these guys. Um, both supports running Ignite, both AD carries running Summoner Heal. Mm -hmm. Both mid laners running Ignite as well. I feel like I want to recount all of them just because things are going to change a whole bunch. B4.5. Yeah. The double Targons for shoving here. Uh, targons with a Thresh mm -hmm. is not a super common thing, but Voidal actually does it as well. So yeah. uh, the, both of these guys actually preferring the extra health there and going to have to rely on their spells and auto attacks to actually land the last hit. They will not be benefiting from the execute. Yeah. Also, Rise starting Mana Crystal. Very offensive start here for him. Mm -hmm. Looking for those high impact long range cues to just harass Zoro Zero down. Yeah. And as opposed to going with boots for the move speed. Yeah. More, much more defensive start. Absolutely. Well, we'll see if he can sit up here against Rumble very nicely. Rumble starting with Thorn Shield. Um, is worth pointing out, Mithy almost always runs attack damage marks on Thresh. He's got 57 AD, which I'm uh -huh. pretty sure is attack damage marks. Um, Thresh has pretty low base AD. Oops. Um, Stepped outside the bush. What? Ward comes get down, it. gets killed. 30 gold to C9E. So that ward going away from Mithy. It's 75 gold down the drain. Um, but worth pointing out that, you know, Targon's does not execute if you're Thresh. Thresh is a yeah. quote-unquote ranged champion. I, so. I did go over that while you were looking at oh, you uh, did? the runes. Okay. Mithy, but well, then. Yeah, I looked up the runes because we were talking about it. But yeah, the runes will help him. He still gets to do more damage there. There you go. All right. You've solved the Counter case. jungling starting already, as we mentioned, from Shivana. That invade made uh, possible by the ward kill that they made in that uh, little bush in the river very early on. It did mean, however, Sivir and Leona didn't get to have a very, very quick start to the lane, so they didn't get to really shove early. Yeah, so we're going to see, actually, a couple of minions miss right here. Good play. Yarnin going to take a lot of damage, actually. Already burned his potion as well and the regen from yeah. the first two stacks of Targon's Brace used. They are definitely going to have an uphill battle here since they did not get to shove early, and they are short range, very short lane uh, for this Cloud9 Eclipse. They're going to have to try and CS under turret now. Yeah. See how many they can secure. Pretty you know, big upper hand here for the NIP bot. Absolutely is. Holberto is going to be able to grab the C9E red buffs. These guys are trading two buffs for two. Ko, she already waiting around to counter gank up here. Yernin still level one, though. Q comes out bit of damage, but... So his AD carry is at 200 HP. It's very, very risky to try and force a gank like this. If Yarnin goes in for any extra damage... Ooh, the E from Voidal misses. No gank for yeah, Ko. It's so dangerous. Like, there... This is a very real possibility of NIP getting first blood again wow. while the other team ganks them. This is that was incredibly. This nice is getting out of control very quickly. Yeah, Voidal forced a flash. Now Summoner Heal is still available for Yernin. And you can see he's trying to wave clear a bit. That Q nearly hit right there. Honestly, NIP are like inches away from taking kills. Yernin does not have spell shield as well. So if you land a hook, that guy is going to have to burn some summoners to get out. Yeah. Even dangerous for them to uh, CS under turret, as you can see. NIP threatening to harass them under. Move up top, though. Yeah, look how far back Odomino's forced to be right there. He's going to miss multiple waves now under the turret. The early pushing by Zero Zero is working out. Shivana should be able to cut off Nuke Duck here. Wow. Think he might have read. seen him. Think he might have seen him get in that bush. Yeah, there weren't any wards. He would have had to see it somehow. Because he went all the way down. I was like, wait a second, and turned back. Yeah. Like That's pretty much the only way you get ganked by Shivana this early, <laughs> is if you walk into her. It's true. He, he does have flash, but uh, as, if you don't walk into her, you should be fine. Just gold card into the face, walk out. Not a big problem. Ko is going to try to keep the invasion going, though, stealing away some of the uh, double golems down on the bottom side. Ko does have 16 to the 11 minions of Holberto, so uh, as far as that's concerned, it's going well. So you actually do have a gold lead overall. Their mid lane's winning by 11 minions. That stun comes in. Look at Ko from the back as well. Mithy's got to be careful here. More red buff, though. He's going to flash away. Pulls the lantern in. Freeze going to be pretty safe. Q comes out. Summoner heal was used to keep the team alive. Ko in a really bad oh, spot. Man. And down he goes. Well played, Mithy. Again, NIP bot lane get ganked. 
they get first blood. Shivana's red buff had already run out. Their AD carry could not apply a lot of pressure because Yarnin is very low. Even though he has summoner heal, the other team have their summoner heal as well, and they used it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Here we go. So this is a Shivana gank for you. No red buff. Uh, adds a bit of damage. But with so much uh, displacement there, they're able to use the flash and the heal. Yeah, heal giving a speed buff now. It's just such a strong summoner. Oh, and Odama has down in the top lane. No hope up there. These pre six, yeah, TF that's, ganks. That's this is the second already. time he roamed up there. Awesome play by Nuketuck. He's giving up minions for it, but honestly, the fact that he's now snowballed that top lane into a good spot, Odama does have his summoner teleport back up plus a tier, but still, I mean, that is a great start. NIP, and I've always wondered if this was in their back pocket. Can NIP, can NIP play <laughs> hyper aggressive early on? Because they're such good players, they, I mean, they're incredible. They, they, three of the four, uh, five members here went to Worlds. Yeah. As Lemon Dogs. Like, these guys have a wealth of experience and they're playing an early game aggressive team more here. The early roaming from pre ult TF, and it's paying off. People can change, Freak. I've always been told, you know, over and over, whenever we go over to Europe to cast some games and we get intel on the guys, like, Nuke Duck is a laner who likes to control his mid lane, and he doesn't like to uh, roam around much like that. But now, he is even before he's level 6 on TF, so exerting his will all over the map mm -hmm. definitely has multiple play styles. Maybe that's just a very old uh, yeah, thing about him staying in mid lane, but... Regardless, he's coming out, roaming around quite often here yeah. early, and it's only going to get worse. He's almost level 6 here. There, he does have it now. The bottom lane has to worry even more. Mm -hmm. Sivir, Leona, with Targons, whenever they shove up, they have to be very careful. Yeah, absolutely. If Sivir's overextended, like, you can spell shield 1 CC, but then you're pretty screwed. One thing I want to point out with this match uh, overall, though, is so even though both these teams have, been, have qualified for... Uh, the Summer Promotion Tournament. We actually know all three teams that are going. Right now, I think these teams are playing for fear. Because you don't want to get first pick. You don't want to play maybe Copenhagen Wolves, whichever team takes six in the playoffs. Like, the scarier you look, the easier your opponent is for promotion. That's ultimately the goal for these guys, to make it into the LCS. So the scarier you look, the later you get picked up in the promo tournament, and the higher chance you play a team who's been having a lot of trouble like Millennium. Yeah, that's what I was saying about... Um uh, LMQ in the North American Challenger scene. It's all about your reputation in Challenger. Reputation does mean a lot. Now, I really would like NIP to continue to pressure Ryze early. Ryze is very easy to take advantage of early. He has no summoner spells. He started tier. He's very, very squishy at this point. Ryze takes a while to scale up. He'll be very, very difficult to deal with early. So with champions like that, you want to take advantage of the windows that you have with them. And uh, I think TF being six would be a great, great uh, opportunity for Nuke Duck definitely to continue the pressure up there. Or maybe Zero Zero could just do it himself. Well, it's gonna be a bit of damage coming in. A little bit more comes through, but doesn't quite have enough. The equalizer, unfortunately, I don't think he even hit Odwamna once right there. Would have been the solo kill for Zoro Zero though, but slight miss on the aim there. Because I haven't seen Rumble Top in a while, but it's fun to see. Yeah, the uh, new skin probably upped his play rate a little bit. He didn't pick it, though. Yeah, sad. Very sad. Maybe it's not uh, available. I know uh, Void Fizz was actually played yesterday, so I think he just opted into being lame. It is available on the Tournament Realm, so Zoro Zero just uh, is a hater. It's the official word here <laughs> in the Challenger Series. Well, uh, players like uh, you know Faker says that he doesn't use skins. Yep. He so, is also uh, a hater. <laughs> He's the... Number one hater in the world. I yes, guess. he is. He's number one. Oh, he's the hater. Will not see a fight here. Ku already though up one level on Kha'Zix. The hard farming here for Shivana. Mm -hmm. Even though he died at bottom, is going that Riggles build and he's going to be trying to get as many large minions as possible because the late game scaling power of that Feral Flare is intense. Shivana, yeah. he might not even have to build a Blade of the Ruin King. He might just be full tank after Riggles. Mm -hmm. The only problem, he's going to need some slow from somewhere. So if he gets a Randuin's, and he should be able to stick on his target and only have to have one offensive Ooh, item. in the battle with Nuke Duck. One more shot. Is the Ignite going to be enough? No, it's not. He's got forced to flash away from the turret, though. Fabivin not quite getting enough damage. Dangerous right there, though, with uh, Alberto coming up on Kha'Zix. He didn't really have an option of going any deeper. 
tough luck for Forbidden. I'm going to just watch the top lane for a bit, though. Despite the uh, couple of early ganks overall, and Odomna getting pushed around a fair bit, honestly, is still keeping up in minions with Zoro Zero in the top lane. This game, only 900 gold apart. Right, Dexter talked about outplaying NIP in their own game. Mm -hmm. C9E just saying, we're going to scale, we're going to scale. They've only given up two kills, and the gold's still close. Yeah, I think that there's still a pretty big window for NIP to uh, attack that rise, but we have not seen an ult from Nuke Duck yet. He made more ganks pre-6 than he has since he's gotten his ult. That's true, actually, yeah. It's been probably, what, six, uh, four minutes or so since actually he hit that level 6 right there, Ko. Looking down towards the bottom, nice hook on Avoidal, gonna get slowed down, puts the ulti down right onto Freeze, though. Bit of damage comes through, Ko waiting in the wind. dive. Uh, summoner heal is up, though. It's gonna be a bit of risk for C9. Nice Q lands, though, from Yernin. Yeah, so they call off the dive. Probably a wise call right there. Yernin did pop his ulti for it, though. And as you can see, Shivana is just making her home in this jungle side, doing a lot of counter jungling. Ko is trying to keep that Kha'Zix in check early, and he's done a good job. Kha'Zix has not had high-impact ganks yet. Let's see what else they can find on this one. Zero Zero happy to remove these minions one more time before getting pushed back. The wave clear coming in for Odwamna. Pop in his ultimate. It's a fairly low cooldown when you rise. It's actually not a bad thing just to spam your ulti. Just get the lane into control. Yeah, especially if you are using your spells to CS. It will further lower the cooldown. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do cast, getting a nice flash out there. These, It's not a lot of effort that Ko is having to put into these top lane ganks. All he yeah. had to do was walk by, and he was awarded a flash. So that was a very, very efficient gank there. Especially since he's Shivana and not a lot of threat. Yeah, so that one's not going to work right there. Mithy looking for random juke patterns for Yernin, but generally speaking, those hooks are not landing on the C9E AD carry. The duo lane, 13 minions in the lead, though. I do have to commend... Uh, Freeze and Mithy for doing a very good job in this lane. Whoa, Rise wow. is dead. So he was blinking there. Um, yep. Solo kill. So the ulti lands. Zero zero. No flash burn either. Yeah, and so much damage. It's. I mean, there's a lot of slow from Rumble, but not hard CC, so. I probably caught him off guard up there. Let's take a look. He just gets a good equalizer this time. Able to squish him against the wall there. Yeah. I don't know. Probably should have ran downhill uh, in that yeah. case. You never want to run over a full equalizer like that. Yeah, he managed to clip the side of it as he's walking through instead of like flashing the wall or flashing past it. So, of course, well played. That's 0-0's zero now 2-0 uh, in this lane matchup overall. I mean, making the kills happen. It's very impressive stuff by this guy. So, NIP just winning the lanes a little bit. Yeah, NIP, they got their extended laning phase here. It's already 13 minutes. No towers have gone down. They have a healthy lead. They're feeling pretty good about this game. Um, Cloud9, though, they have a lot of late game scaling. Sivir with Shivana is always a great combo, even if it is coming from the jungle. She'll be a little bit less tanky, but not that much. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always really good with Ryze, too, who scales up late game and also benefits greatly from move speed. It's going to be a fun one to watch then. How good is the C9E late game team fight? Can Odwamna rejoin his team into fights and all that fun stuff? We have seen Ryze. Be very effective in the semifinals, actually. Seen an E fell afoul of that champion. Uh oh. Okay, burnout. Yeah. Not gonna oh. be able to take it away. Charms it. There we go. Not many people take the uh, blade. Uh, what's my call it? Mastery. Yeah. Well, it won't anymore. steal it anyway. It's oh yeah, it hits a health. percentage. It hits really weak. Yeah. As the as the monster gets lower. Should, it should be impossible to steal. Um, but yeah, the weird thing is like, just as a random aside on that mastery, if you're a slow clearing jungler like someone like Nautilus who doesn't kill the big camps very fast, you actually get a substantial amount of clear speed out of that mastery. Because the big guy's gonna be at high health for a while. If you're like Shivana, I can see not wanting to pick it up because you'll kill things fast anyway. I think it's, it helps slow junglers. Yeah, it doesn't help him enough though. TF there, long range ulti back to lane. So he was walking up towards Ryze, mm -hmm. but there was no slow landed onto Ryze. Yeah. So that's why he popped the ulti. Yes, yeah, so it was a little premature, um, but he was looking to go top. He wasn't just using that to get back to mid lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he cares that much about the landing phase. You know what? I'll ult to make my trip back quicker. Minions. Yes, please. Zoro Zero does have his ulti back up. Guess he does like to control his lane. Yep. <laughs> Do all my ganking before I get level six. To be fair, it watches for counter ganks too. You'd be like, oh, Shivana's bottom. All right, I'm safe. Yeah.
And also we would give them vision around Dragon. There's uh, 15 minutes here. Haven't seen it taken down yet. Not a lot of control around that area of the map either. You can see NIP very defensive here. They even just shove one ward over the back of the Dragon Pit. They're not looking to uh, set up a lot around it. They just want to make sure that C9 weren't taking it. Huh. Well, it's going to be their choice for now, Febivin. Looks for the worm down, but sees Hilberto. Realize he's spotted pieces out of that one. Hilberto, ward over the wall. That one's going to get killed, but Febivin, he's actually in a bit of a tough spot. He's going to get locked down. Forced to ulti. The uh, damage coming through Ignite as oh. well nearly takes on Hilberto. Yeah, I don't know. Febivin has been playing very careful. Yeah. Uh, he does not overextend four trades, it looks like. The second time he's gotten someone extremely low, and someone else on NIP shows up to save that person. And Fabibin completely backs off, does yeah. not even tr want to try and go for it, even with summoners up. Uh, but it's a safe way to play. They're going to try and take advantage of the jungler being chunked down and just take the easy objective. Yeah. I like it. Low risk. Lowless prey here from uh, Cloud9. Yes. Uh, it looks like they are trying to use this uh, late game NIP scaling against them. Yeah. And Ko just finished Feral Flare. That was actually his first camp since Feral Flare was the dragon. It was his first soul consumed. Pretty good. Yeah. 16 minutes is a very decent Feral Flare. Mm -hmm. uh, fastest one I've had was uh, 15 minutes, about 15 minutes even. Oh, nice. And that's if you're doing really well. Yeah. But 16 is also very strong. I got a five minute Riggles once. I got a triple kill off teleport bottom lane. It was great. So I backed and got a Riggles. I don't know if I got it by like 15 minutes before, but yeah, plenty fast. Alberto does have Lizard Elder. For what it's worth, guys, later on in this game, I'll be tracking um, conservation versus Riggles money later on in this game. 0-0, though. Ooh. We'll be in a fight against Otwamna and Ko. It, the teleport comes out for TF. Ko has to ulti over the wall, but still taking damage. Forced to flash as well. Herberto on the wings. Nuke Duck, will he flash the slow onto two? The Q is going to land on a one. Ko still trying to run away. Looks like he'll be safe, but the counter gag works. Now in the bottom lane, a fight erupts. Sivir ulti pop. Two box walls, maybe a third soon. A lot of damage. Febivin gets the kill back into 0 0, but now in the bottom lane, Freeze trying to run away. Ulti comes in. Voil gonna be able to dodge most of the culling here and keep himself alive. All right, we're top and we bottom. Kills everywhere. One man down for each team. Both top laners dead. Nobody bites the dust down bottom, but a lot of summoners as well as the ulti is blown. Yeah, looks three like summoners and four. Cloud9 retain control of the lane here after the exchange. Wow. All right, so up top. Um, they started, whoa. That was the clean. That was live, and uh, no, that was replay. Yeah. This was live. The PIP, confusing. Oh, yeah. That, All that right, was so they get, a, they get a, that was the answer kill on the rumble. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, despite the TF uh, ulti, I got to say, good good roam made by Febivin. Yeah, so the thing that was unfortunate for Cloud9, you know, Ryze flashed out of that two versus two exchange and then hung around because he was worried for Shivana tried to land another snare and ended up going down himself because he was trying to save his uh, partner there. Oh, rough. Wow. Oh, what you're saying about the jungle items, though. Generally, uh, conservation will award you more money than the Riggles passive or the Feral Flare passive, unless you're just permanently farming your jungle, which is a fairly poor jungle style to play. Okay. Um, so generally, the conservation awards you a little bit more gold, but you also have to take into account the ward that you get to drop. I want to have to kill again by zero zero. That's true. Yeah, you get a third of a sight stone basically. Voidal in a bit of a damage. Wow, the flash from Mithy keeps himself alive. Eclipse is still on though. Voidal not taking much damage. Mithy will disengage. Small, small window for him to flash out there. Gets to safety. Bottom lane turret down, though. That should afford them some control for the next dragon. It's interesting, actually, I want to point out. Voidal rushed face the mount with no other items. He that is loved, literally his first item. He loves that item. Like, yeah, he, he does. gets it on Thresh. He gets it, like, he's a very he big fan. Annie. Yeah, he's a, exactly. He's a very big fan of face of the mountain and it's uh it's going to help them out because they do need a little bit of extra tankiness to shore up with rise and shivana since it's a jungle shivana mm -hmm. i do like that pickup for him getting it really early uh, affords them a mid-game tank that they don't really have otherwise and cloud nine with their late game scaling team have actually gotten ahead in gold despite being down kills yeah and that's and even despite the tf passive too now we talk. Okay, so this is a shifter move right here. 
Oh, Will he miss? the juke! Nuke Dark though taking a bunch of pain, dodges the second Q. Ulti comes in. Forbiven does not have the damage. Nuke Duck with the escape. That was a nice. really strong escape. If the charm had landed, 100% dead. But it did not, and Forbiven does not get his kill. Quick thinking there by Nuke Duck, getting off the fast stun into TF Ulti. Yeah. W almost came back up. You saw him dash forward and couldn't quite put the damage through there. Face the Mountain, of course, available. Looks like Sightstone already picked up as well, plus Boots. So, uh, Voidal basically equalized the item lead right here. Going to see what Mithy goes for with the items. He's starting part of a Chalice, but he's also getting a Ruby Crystal. We'll see where that ends up moving. Mm, yeah, interesting item pickup here for TF as well with the changes to Lich Bane. Not trying to get that early at all. Already going to needlessly large rod, just looking for more burst power with his spell. Yeah, we'll see where the transition keeps moving him to. Voidal and Yarn are going to make their way towards the mid lane. They walk through a ward, though. Nothing going to be too crazy in this one. Ko making his way top lane as well. A bit of a fight looks like he's going to start here. Two on two oh. in the rush. He goes. Equalizer misses completely. And Odwamda looking for damage now here. Hilberto forced ult trying to run away down very, very low. Zoro Zero now very much alone on this one. He's going to take down Ko before he falls. Odwamda does not have flash. Cannot catch Hilberto one for one. Man. Equalizer missing like that in a two versus two is mm -hmm. terrible for your team. You can see how close the fight was even without equalizer damage. Would have yeah. changed everything here. But now the mid lane push and Mithy does not have flash this time. Stun comes in, DFG for Biven picks up one kill. Dwamna gets the root on a nuke duck. That's gonna be a whole bunch of pain as well. Yerna gets the kill. C9 Eden now with four kills in the map, two for zero. On that and they're fight. looking to press it here. Uh, calling for a shove on mid, continued. Power play here. They do not have a minion line though, so they're gonna have to wait around. Nobody's got enough armor to tank a turret this early in the game. They wouldn't even get a lot of damage down on it. Great rotation over to Dragon though. They should have the timer. Three more seconds on it. Good Solar Flare able to catch out Mithy. As we said, he didn't have flash this time, so there's no hope. And they do get two. Gromne coming in with the teleport from the backside there. That deep ward. Not only does it allow for mid lane picks, but also it allowed for that uh, deep teleport by Rise. Yeah. So awarding them uh, a good flank opportunity and fortunate timing for Dragon coming up right then. Yeah. C9 here and really good control of two Dragons for themselves. Uh, this is a quick update on the jungle items. During that replay, I checked they're both at about 250, so they're holding equal so far. Let's see if it transitions out anywhere else in the future in this one, but. See what happens. Vivian actually has been staying top lane for a bit in this one, actually. He's second time he's been holding this lane, but looks like 0 0 plus Holberto. Actually, 0 0 plus uh, Mithy might be enough to just control this turret right now. Vivian forced back, turret does go down. NFP find their first of the game. Yeah, you gotta respect this uh, 0 0 rumble right now. Going a lot of damage and penetration here. If he does land a good uh, ulti, then it will be very hard to deal with. They really need his next equalizer. Uh, to be a sh uh, the turning of the tides in a team fight here. I feel like it's slipping away from NIP. Yeah. And they need to make some sort of move either with the global teleport from TF or with a strong equalizer to make their comeback now because this late game from C9, it looks like their rotations are very strong and they're the ones who have Sivir and they have the teleport. Yeah. So the only thing they have to deal with is this global teleport from TF, which he has not been using very often. Yeah, he used it once for a gank top that got turned around as a one for one, once to escape away from Ari. Mm -hmm. The Rumble you mentioned before is also available. Looks like C9E had the way in on the red buff, but Alberto doesn't want to give this one away. We'll see if the red buff is. There's no Shivana here, so there's not going to be a smite away. Um, at best, Cloud9 can, could deny it from maybe freeze and force Alberto to take it, but that's not a very big deal. Junglers love having that red buff. Yeah. It is a little bit more effective on melees than it is on range anyway. Ooh, flash by Nuketuck gets him away. The slow lands from the ulti. He pops the ult himself, oh. but goes down too quickly for Bevan. Gets the kill credit on this one. Killing They're going to cut off Rumble too. Zero Zero's in trouble. Oh, his health bar might get removed to zero. No. Oh. What? He turned around. Okay. I guess he didn't think anyone was coming to stop him. He got in some reinforcements here. Kazix as well as Thresh coming up to back him up. Blue should probably go over to Cloud9 as long as they finish that top turret in time. They can easily collapse here. They're also getting a lot of good ward coverage here down on NIP's jungle side. There's no blue wards on Cloud9's side of the map. 
pretty much all of the fighting going to be taking place over on this NIP jungle. And Cloud9. Well, little wave clear is going to be enough to keep the uh, turret in completely full health right there. NIP do stop that one. Code makes his way back around. Did rush a Randwood's Omen. He actually bought a cloth armor and sold it at some point randomly. He had that very early on in the game, but got rid of it. Wanted Merc Treads anyway. So Randwood's Omen now done. Only one offensive items. You did identify that one. Oh, yeah. Randwood's Omen, go. as I said, he needs a slow from somewhere. He's mm -hmm. not going to be building that blade since he started Wriggles. Big pickup right there. Yeah. Going to allow him not only to chase Lucian, but TF as well. This TF, he just uses Flash and his ulti. So he's a very immobile, squishy champion. If anybody gets on him, he's going to be in trouble. He does not have his um, Zanyas. That's what I thought the Needlessly Large would go into, but he's actually gone Death Cap. Yeah. So he's playing really, really offensive here. It's a bit of a gambit from Nuke Duck here. But we'll see if it pays off. Does it give him more wave clear? Yeah, it'll keep him ahead of the curve as far as one shot and casters with his Q. It's always a sort of a battle with TF. Mm -hmm. Is because casters gain two MR every couple of minutes as well as some health. Uh, you kind of have this race of like, can I get enough ability power and magic pen? And with him going Merc Treads, he's got to keep his AP up. Otherwise, he'd be in danger of not getting it. Um, but yeah, last time I really saw Nuke Duck TF, it was a while ago, but he was his dedicated split pusher. He would always be able to put pressure on turrets. He was always able to kill off minion waves. And honestly, he's so good at stopping the pushes there. You've got Lucian, Twisted Fate, and Rumble all ready to clear out minions. Like, C9E actually sieging? It's going to be hard. Yeah, they're definitely going to be looking for the team fights. And it looks like NIP have decided we do not want to take any of those. Even though we have Rumble, we're going to have our TF build more for the wave clear and not for the team fight with Azanias. They're going to try and uh, spread out the map here. Let's see if they can find it. Dragon's up in a minute 15. C9E has already been controlling the objectives right there. They did not steal the rabbit, but they did steal the blue. Rise, of course, continuing to scale. Has Seraph's Embrace completely done. Hook comes out, does not oh. land. Nor do the Void Spikes. NIP do have some defensive pink wards, though, keeping their jungle fairly safe. All right. Well, five men middle here. If the, if the team fight does break out towards the mid, it's going to be a lot of pressure on Zoro Zero to land his ulti. His ulti will do a tremendous amount in this team fight because he, as well, has gotten extremely offensive uh, with his build. He's got a death cap as well. Going to need a good one for them to land. However, Cloud9 have so much mobility, they can easily reposition. Sivir ulti, Ryze even has his own move speed that he'll be able to make use of, and Ari is extremely hard to lock down. I really like Cloud9's chance in this team fight. They're looking to flank from the side. Well, they look maybe in for this one. Ko a bit far away, 10 seconds till Dragon. They're at least controlling the rotations on it. TF ult pop. Ah, uh, there it is. Draw them over to the Dragon pit. Okay, five versus five. Poke coming out from Holberto. NIP. Maybe they push mid lane for this, but right now, C and E have started up on the Dragon. Ninjas in pajamas waiting far enough away. Looks like they will not go for this whatsoever. Dragon going down rather quickly. And Ko will claim a victim there. Dragon actually goes over to Yernin. Scumbag Yernin stealing a Feral Flare stock of that one. Ulti comes in. It's going to be a dash away. Holberto, Nuke Duck, they're all in the mix. Nice knockback. But here comes the fight. Equalizer comes across the entire team. Nuke Duck goes down first. The backline still safe. Ko, forced to run, but he's going to get traded down. Back by Mithy. One for one fight. Flashed by Yernin. Good damage comes through. Can he find much more? Hilberto takes a crit to the back of the head. The Mithy off on the side as well. More flashes used. Oh, the hook doesn't land. And down he goes. Picks up the kill on a Mithy. Two for one, C9E. Yeah, and NIP were able to get one kill because it was a good equalizer that cut off the rest of the team while they focused down the Shivana. But as we said, this TF, extremely squishy, uh, very immobile, not able to get out alive. Getting the slow from the Solar Flare, they started off, they go right into the box and equalizer. So three members sitting on box plus equalizer. Everybody else kind of gets zoned out and Ko gets focused down, so they trade it one for one. But one team has Sivir, amazing at chasing down. And then Mithy trying to tag somebody on the backside. The Bibbin just turns around right in his face. Yeah, that. I feel like that the hook did a land. Greedy. So you said the hook didn't land. It landed, oh. just not on the target did that was going to kill yeah. him. <laughs> not the one you just really want. Someone stuff right else. there. But yeah, well, there you go. Uh, update on the jungle items 500 gold for uh, the Lizard Elder of Fulbert, about 450 for Ko's Shivana, but 22 Feral Flare stacks. Yeah. for Shivana so far. So 
Uh, worth it? Definitely worth it. A couple uh, of wars. Like I said, well, it's, it's the late game option mm -hmm. for the jungle. And since the early game did not have a lot of action, that's the kind of jungler that you want in these long games. Cloud9 came into this game thinking they were going to play the long game. They were going to try and go with option number two. Yeah. Outscale NIP, play them at their own game. And it has worked out beautifully for them. They use the rise, they use the silver pick, and they've also got the farming jungle. So it looks like Ko is not just an early game jungler here, not just able to put out great ganks, great early game with Lee Sin. 134 CS Shivana. Gotta say, actually, pretty high minion score game overall. No, no record setting paces, although 310 for Fabivan's pretty good. Three completed items there, Death Cap, DFG, Void Staff. Not much mana regen, not much CDR, but if you can one-shot people, who cares? It's going to look pretty okay in Ari there. We'll see what his next item ends up being. I really like the item path for Ryze, too. He's Anytime he's against strong AP, it's actually good for him because he loves building Spirit Visage. Cooldown reduction and the increased health, um, the increased healing is so good on Ryze. He's very happy that it also doubles as the best sort of defense to build against a double AP comp. Yeah, he'll be happy. I wonder if anyone's going to go with Missile here, because both these teams are running double AP comps. Mm -hmm. In fact, Shivana's going to probably do more magic than physical to champions anyway. Yeah, she definitely will. So, almost triple AP in a certain way. The AD carry is the only main source of physical damage for both lineups here. I guess Kha'Zix actually another big one. But you can see how fast the wave could clear down. But Yarnan staying around. Low health jumped in from Freeze. Good damage. The roll he popped, actually. Was almost in range of getting equalized. Zero Zero holds it, though. C9E disengage. Now, Odomine does have his teleport um, available. So he should probably just go soak up the minions that are going to run into the bottom turret there. Uh, as the rest of the team had to back off. I don't think that he would want to stick around mid if the rest of them do not collapse here. Is an interesting choice for Cloud9 right now. Uh, are they going to collapse and try and defend the secondary turret? TF is trying to take advantage. Yeah. Well, they got the mid lane turret well, down. It backs off. Play. Well, that's my nuke deck, though. He ulted to reveal locations to get mid without yeah. getting jumped, and then just like cleared away of bottom for a bit of pressure. But I mean, NAP have always been very risk averse. So Cloud9 were able to get the Kenneth minion wave at turret. Didn't even lose money there. Even though they failed their push top, they didn't have to pay for it with anything. And IP were unable to make a strong push, either mid or or bottom. I mean, there was one hit left on that yeah. turret, so I guess you can award them a single, single turret kill. Outer turret number three does go to Ninja Pajamas not long ago. Cloud9 Eclipse have gotten tier two mid for themselves, so a small lead on that one. Aegis gets picked up for Voidal, so his investment in getting a lot of money on himself uh, grants the team a bit more. Of course, this is with the 4.5 changes, so Locket is plus a Kindle gem in the recipe com combination. We'll see that he's going to be close to that pretty soon. Ninja Tabby as well for the Leona. Although, uh, standard stuff here, Mithy has a lot of CDR. We'll see if he finishes his item or if he goes towards Ascension late game. Oh, face checking into Ari is always very, very painful. Yep. She does ridiculous damage when the charm lands, and that's a guaranteed uh, charm to land yeah. walking into it. Now it's going to be really hard for NIP to stop this. Well, it's going down really quickly. Equalizer. Great Plus equalizer. Cool, like, amazing damage comes through. C9E forced to disengage. They jump in. Nuke Duck taking a bunch of pain. Charm will not land. Zero, zero off in the wings of the box. Doing a fair bit of damage as well. Can they re-engage? They look for Odwamna oh. right now. The Baron is still fighting. Odwamna very low on health. The Oh, nice shot comes in. The hook on the Yarn, and he's going to go down as well. Febovit, can he find Mithy? He gets flayed back. Huge damage comes across. Ignite is on, and down he goes. Well, Three kills for NIP. Well, we talked about the importance of that next team fight equalizer. Mm -hmm. It was godly. Inside the Baron pit, always very dangerous to group up, especially against double AP comps. Yeah. If Baron does make it rain on your team, then you will take increased magic damage. And uh, let's see there. Yeah, I think cuts off the exit, traps pretty much everybody in with Baron, so they're taking more damage too. And then the box for the secondary line of peel. Yeah. They have two very strong lines of wow. peel here on the NIP team. Uh, answer kill on the freeze. Yeah, the Baron gets wow, interrupted. No. They go in, they find a guy back. Looks like Baron's going to regen all the way back to full on this one. So Ninjas of Pajamas, they got a couple of kills. Bringing the scoreline within under 5,000 gold. So still a very close game. Neither team able to cement major advantages.
Cloud9 will be more wary of the Rumble ulti after that last fight. So I don't know if they will be a bit more timid around that Baron area. It was a pretty good opportunity for them, but mm -hmm. the Dragon is up as well, and it is a much, much less scary objective to go for. Yeah. Buffed a bit, 4.5. Ulti comes in, slows Zoro Zero. He does have Flash, uses it. Yes. It's the wall. Super You're flash. still in the chase. Ko, the Flash, Randwin's used. Equalizer's not bad. He takes a land from the way out. Nuke Duck's there as well. Odromna Rune Princess it takes a bit of pain as well. But there goes the disengage from TF. Looks like no kills picked up. Yep, they didn't get anybody, but they did get the Equalizer down. So they don't have to worry about it the second time around. Decent ward coverage from both teams around Baron Pit. And we'll probably see more sweepers coming out. I mean, two is kind of the mid-game standard for sweepers. Mm -hmm. Usually by this point, 35, 36 minutes in, they'll start swapping out a few more of those trinket war, uh, the warding trinkets for sweepers. Need more vision control. Or at the very least, buy more pink wards. Yeah, true. Honestly, these guys... Not that much uh, true sight here. Yeah, both teams are really allowed to get a lot of wards up right now. You're seeing a s giant scattering of them around uh, the Baron pit right there on both sides of the wall. A couple of defensive pink wards I can see in the Blizzard jungle of NIP. Gonna be the Dragon started up now for Cloud9 Eclipse. Looks like Voidal and Pavivin gonna start that one out. Ko is coming around as well. Sunfire plus Randwins for himself, also likely to get a Banshee soon. I could actually see Visage. He's gonna have some health regen in fights. See what he ends up picking up in this one. Zero, zero, freeze though. Happy to keep the mid lane minion wave gone, so. Man, I mean. 40 minutes in almost, what a game. These guys fighting back and forth rather closely. No one's in a definitive real lead here. Yeah, because no one is really uh, making that strong effort to control the vision completely. It's very hard in the new patch to actually black out the screen for someone, like uh, completely make Fog of War for the other team. You really have to commit to it fully. I, okay, they picked up one more sweeper. Um, but really, everybody has to do their part with the pink wards. So, probably just be looking at more picks coming down here. I mean, the Sivir team with Ari has a very high potential for picking somebody off. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like NIP have been able to use TF ulti to catch anyone out of position. So, I'd probably give the advantage in picks over to Cloud9. Um, since Nuke Duck has been mostly trying to shove waves, and now he has a list bench, he'll probably be split pushing. Yeah, we'll see. Honestly, the teleport up for Adwamna, the teleport up for Twisted Fate, for Nuke Duck, the Void Staff coming in soon for the Rise right there. But Zoro Zero, I mean, adds a Death Gap into the mix. He's got the Rileys as well. TF to escape with his ulti. Another defensive ulti burned. I see Zoro Zero making his way around, but he's actually walking through wards right here. I mean, C9E, they own much more of the jungle with Vision. Gonna control right now the Baron Pit as well. More wards gonna go down on this one. Looks like the Baron Pit might be what these guys want. Odrom's gonna go bottom lane with his summoner teleport available. Might help him a bit. Top yeah. lane not really doing much. So they have the global advantage here. They can easily defend waves. They've got Sivir for wave clear, Ari for wave clear. They have no problem defending um, sieges. Really, they have this small window where TF's ulti is down, yet they have the rise teleport. So they have a small advantage there. And really, they just need vision more around the middle of the map so they can catch NIP in a rotation with the Ari and with the Sivir. So all they need is catch one person out of position. They've got plenty of move speed to capitalize on anybody being caught. Okay. So safety in numbers for NIP. We'll see if they can keep themselves from getting caught out before mm -hmm. Cloud9 Eclipse can make these openings happen. Blue buff right now. Looks like it's going to be given to Fabivan, actually. Adwamna has enough mana for himself anyway. Yarnin and Freeze going to battle over Pink Ward. It's going to go NIP's way with this one. Still about five, actually 6,000 gold, slightly growing here. Flight on the Cliffs getting a small gold lead in this one. Alberto level 17. These people farming a lot, waiting around for the late games in this one. No one waiting on the bottom side of the map. Again, the battle being for the Baron Pit here. The wards, very much the objective for both teams. TF ulti, yeah. doesn't even need wards. Sees him anyway. <laughs> Not for long, Duck though. Cheating. Not for long. Now, they need to get pressure on one of these lanes here. Uh, they have TF shoving mid. They sort of have Cloud9 cornered here. Uh, and they're going to make them respond to the minion wave that they've created at middle. Good little move there from NIP. They're not getting caught around Baron. There's not enough true sight for them to have to face check it. 
So they divert Cloud9's attention very successfully. Let's see what we find with this one, honestly. It's a slower game. Farm's coming in, 289 minions on Rise. Void Staff is done, so he's very offense-focused. Chain Vest grab, that might be a GA. Could be Randwitz. Once they uh, get a full tank Shivana, then the options for tower dives will actually open up, though. He's got two slots to go. Yeah, so it's a long ways off, and they don't want to do it before then, because if they do it before then, then again, they have two lines of very strong peel here for NIP. They've got the Equalizer, and they have the box from Thresh. You do not want to dive in onto that unless you know you have a very large advantage. Okay, so slow and steady going to win the race for these guys. Wouldn't be a NIP game without it. Uh, nice long landing phase for everybody. Voidal, not it. They don't even let him get any of his last hits right there. Scumbag Yerner just like takes the entire wave and says, at some point you'll gain gold. They're feeling very strong about the team fight though. If they can catch somebody out, uh, again, we already mentioned so many times, Leona Ult, Ari, Sivir, this is so much potential here for Cloud9 to catch somebody. Uh, if they can grab one, it'll be a huge win for them. They're just continually trying to force over by Baron, but again, look at all this true sight they're trying to work with. Only one pink ward in the unupgraded sweepers is not going to be enough. They need to upgrade some of those sweepers. Because look, there's a one ward still inside Baron Pit they haven't been able to grab. And NIP can continue split pushing, trying to draw them out across the map. Yeah. That's why you always pink ward in the Baron Pit. Like, never ever try to sneak Baron unless you pink ward inside the pit itself, because you Hard will. Of course, again, got to watch that equalizer. Well, it's going to be 0 0 off on the side. Will he jump in? Will he do much with the equalizer? It's like the reveal, gonna put Voidal in the mix, gonna get a slow on zero zero, misses the E, Lantern is not gonna find anybody. Several ult down. Gonna be a just Can a they wait it spells. out? Two spells for one on this one. Rise ult is down too, all this move speed is gone here for Cloud9. And they even snuck a ward in as well. So there's another 10 seconds before you can even get That was up. a very favorable exchange for NIP, even though no action went down. Yeah, and Huge, huge favorable exchange for them. They can shove with a cannon minion here. TF should make quick work of that turret. NIP do a good job in the late game. This is why they like going to the late game. They're very calm and collected. Very, very calm. Didn't force the issue. The threat of Rumble stopping really any of the Baron attempts there. A new attempt is walking back and forth between waves. 376 minions. Before, I was saying the only guy who was breaking 10 CS a minute was Fabivin, the Ari. Now, new no ult. Beating him there's minions. no ult for TF here. Well, so be. he's got to walk his way all the way back to the pit. But it's on top of Ward. Some good damage comes in from the Eco Wise. Still Can tanking Baron. E come back in for this one. Odromna takes the Baron debuff, reducing his damage pretty heavily. Now the same for Febivin. Oh, over the wall. man. Again. And nothing grabbed. Colin comes across. Doesn't find much, though. Baron makes it rain. And NIP forced to back off again. Freeze. That half. Aggro's Baron. NIP want this fight. They've got better positioning, though. C9 E split up in two different halves right here. Better poke comes across. Odromna half HP. <laughs> Solar players back up. And they're going to go in for this one. Odomna's caught out. Stun lands. Rune Prison's not going to be much. Down he goes. Febivin takes a card to the back. Jump in from Hilberto. Lands Oopsie, a bit more damage. Far. Overextends though and goes down. One for one. And meanwhile, minions are pushing down turrets on different sides of the map. But NIP have the inside track now towards the mid lane. Yeah, that was definitely too much for Hilberto to go for. NIP still have the momentum though. Going to be some decent wave clear. Hook's not going to land, but they've got minions. But looks like they're going to back off. Afraid of Ari coming back in with home guards. That's Sivir wave clear. Oh, okay. Solar flare landing. He pulls in 0, zero. Some good damage going to come back. Coast slowed down. Hooked in as well. Half HP. Dragon gets him out a little bit of the way, but there's more damage on the zero, 0 is going to be two kills picked up. Bebevin getting both actually from over the wall. Oh. Yerman in the melee range goes down. Bit up more than he could chew. Oh, Freeze shot him in the face. Flashing in to die there. What is Yarn in? All right, exciting little bit of action there. Now this is the very end of it, where the three-man Cloud9 group um, actually are able to make NIP stick around, which they do not want since they burned all their ulties. Uh, Fabibin comes in at the very end. He does not have Ari ult, so can't jump over to join anything. But uh, the TF stun right there, locking up Nirenin as soon as he jumps in. And again, Cloud9 return to the Baron Pit, and again, TF ulti reveals what they're trying to do. TF shows with Freeze, but the stun comes in, and Fabivin just goes in. Down goes Freeze right away. I had no word for that. He just goes and like, well, he's disappeared. Freeze got thawed, melted. That's the word. 
I don't know. Thawed sounds great. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Tomna is able to send him to Rune Prison. How about that? Um, and yeah. Bivin, Bivin actually executes the sentence there. But that's a huge win. Cloud9, they finally get what they are going after. They return to the Baron, mm -hmm. and they actually get it this time, catching Freeze out. NIP were a little disoriented after that last fight. Were not able to regroup. Rip up goes to Ari. Interesting. He, it, just, he just got one off killing Freeze. Man, oh. they, uh, they were doing so well, too. NIP was doing so well yeah. pulling Cloud9 around. Even though Cloud9 had this uh, pretty big lead mm -hmm. and this stronger team fight, NIP were positionally outplaying them yeah. until that one misstep. It only takes one misstep. And yeah. remember, it all started with Kha'Zix jumping back in to trade back a yeah. kill. And IP had gotten a clean kill. TF ulti, they took down Rise, one of the biggest parts of the C9 team. But they wanted more. Kha'Zix went in and could not click the lantern back out. From yep. then, it was uh, hard rotations for NIP to make up for. I guess that's kind of what happened as well. Like, if you're the one down in gold, you make all these great plays. But if you suck yourself into a just dedicated fight, mm -hmm. you saw exactly what happened with that one. Yeah, so it's really easy for um, you to just make one mistake because Cloud9 have this amazing chase team. Like, mm -hmm. they have all the speed and they have this great team fight power. You have to play it perfectly. If you make one misstep, then you're going to lose out on not only Baron, but uh, looks like they got Dragon as well. Dragon, I believe, actually went to NIP in picture in ah. picture. So Ninja's been jammed because, uh, yeah, C and E ran over to start Baron after the few catches. So oh, NIP so they like, traded. Yeah, NIP with, like, I think it was just um, Freeze and uh, Nuke Duck took that one down. Um, I also like that during the chase, the replay we had a second ago, they even took those two kills with a single Foxfire each one. It just, like, shot over the wall, like, invisible and, like, knocked them down. Efficiency. Yeah, very well secured. Didn't even have to aim. Just press W and it happened. All right, TF does as a, have his teleport once again. But it's going to be, uh, they need him at the turret to wave clear, so I don't think he's going to be split pushing here. Yeah. Can't wait for a teleport in. There's also the drawback whenever you're teleporting into a team fight late. There's a giant circle on the ground that tells the enemy where you're going to land. With all sorts of skill shots. Like that hook right there on the minion, down it went. Helped the team pick it up with this turret. It's down to half HP right now. Baron buff on, I think, four fifths of Cloud and Eclipse. So some good region for everyone but Yearnin. Silly Sivir died in the last fight. And we're waiting just in between every wave. They're going to try to go in, find some damage. So here we go again. Ku hovering on the outside here makes me think that they're looking for a good engage. Good equalizer. All they have to do is back off. It's done. Voidal goes in, loses half his HP. Ko jumps in as well, uh, gets hooked in, has the shield, and goes down. Two for one so far. NAP's favorite three whoa. kills coming across. A lot of deaths on all sides. Hilberto into the back lines. He's trying to get away. Goes down. Looks like two surviving members for each team. All right. So they get inside the base, and they get the buildings down that they wanted. It could have been cleaner, though. Uh, equalizer goes down. If, if uh, Voidal did not engage over that equalizer, mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the team could have added uh, some damage and backup to it, but kind of cut off the rest of the team there with that one. Yeah. All said and done, though, three for three, and they get both the turret. As see, everybody else is backing off. Voidal's going in, so he's going to go down, but they do have the damage to back it up here. Ko's able to uh, soak up a lot from that turret. The pivot goes right into the heart of the team to take on everyone. And eventually, Ryers will be able to get across the line to clean up. So uh, three versus three, two, two buildings down. Big cleanup there for Cloud9. Because yeah. as a short-range team, they do have the toughest time with the first inhibitor turret to go down. Now that they have one down, they have a much clearer path. Yeah. You saw like how hesitant they were. You talked about like when Voida went in, the rest of the team was like way back. Yeah, so, everybody everybody's, uh, has the same idea. Retreat, yeah. retreat. <laughs> Except Voidal. We got to well, kill them now. Voidal went in. You're in those like waiting for equalizer to end, and it was like completely in turret range. We like did nothing for five seconds. Yeah. I was like, guys, I'm helping. And then just knocked the turret down afterwards. But yeah, honestly, nine, two, and three on Tebivan's Ari. That's working so well for him. For last pick, mm -hmm. pick that knew he was fighting against TF in the mid lane. One in minions, though not by the end game at this point. You're seeing TF wave through ring, but oh no, still on the chase. Good harpoon gonna stop him though. It's a gigantic slow. Yeah, you got a few too many bullets in the face as well. Man, he does have the last item, Guardian Angel, though. This is maxed out Rise. It's one of the scariest things in the game. Full item Rise, even upgraded boots mm -hmm. for more flashes, 
More flashy plays. More teleports too. He actually runs faster after flashing and teleporting now as well. So it's going to be all kinds of fun dealing with this man. Level 18 for the entire lineup on both sides, except for Mithy, who's only 16. All right, so both AD carries with the one item, one defensive item, I look like they're opting for Banshee's Veil. I like that one, uh, rather than trying to cleanse any of the uh, CCs mm -hmm. or go with a Guardian Angel. Yeah, I think it makes a lot Blocking of sense, so. one spell is pretty much the highest impact that you're going to look for with that one defensive item. Right now, though, five versus uh, four. Cloud9 just shoving down outer turrets here as uh, Roberto was forced to clear top lane. So only in Hiv turrets and Nexus turrets left right here. C9E looked down to the bottom lane. Roberto. Now Nuke Duck going to be part time defending top against these super minions. Looks like he times it right, though. He waits until the wave dies at bottom, then heads over, clears the wave, and has 30 seconds to get his way back down to the bottom lane. And looks like Nuke Duck will be there in time to defend once more. All right, their eyes are going to be on who can we land a stun on here for NIP. Uh, they want to lock somebody down who does not have a Banshee's Veil. Hopefully who does not have a Guardian Angel as well. So he's looking at uh, Ku or, or Voidal. Even locking down the front line is not bad. TF focuses the first person. He does have Void Staff. He's got plenty of penetration. Burning down the front line is uh, actually a good strat here for NIP. They've got plenty of peel. As we mentioned before, the Equalizer plus box is very good at defending versus turret dives. c and e going to lurk their way into the brush with their Void Lock. going to be the one scouting out. They look for the flank. They get the stun on Zoro Zero. Here comes the team. Sibirulti in tow as well. Huge burst. Nuke Duck goes down. Void on the front lines does not care if he dies, though, because they're going to find more kills for the team. One for one so far. Hobarto in the back lines. Looks for Yarenin, but three kills already picked up for C9E, and they look for the front door. Yeah, great job there by C9E, collapsing, catching them out of guard. I don't think they have to even go inhibitor turrets. Should be the end of the game here. Uh, the inhibitor respawns, but you know they've still got a super minion here. Cloud9 Eclipse going to look to close out game one of this grand final best of five. Nexus turret number one under fire. Number two about to go down as well. 52 minutes into the game and a phenomenal team effort, but Cloud9 Eclipse will win game one, the grand finals of the Challenger Spring Series. 52 minute game. Yep. Uh, not much of a surprise there. We thought it yeah. would be a long one with yeah. NIP. And Cloud9, they did go with option number two. Yeah. More late game power, beat them at their own game. Yeah, and despite how hard Odwamna got camped, too, he started 0-3-0 on Rise. So much attention was spent up there, but NIP unable to capitalize off those kills to do much more. The turret stayed equal. Dragons, actually, almost all of them went to Cloud9 Eclipse as well, and the outskilling worked. Yeah, it's been said time and time again, even if you kill Rise early, it's going to scale up late game, so want to take advantage of the little window that you do have. Yeah, so I actually want to bring up a replay real quick, though. It's a really sweet hook by Mithy, even though they lost the game. It's, uh, it's pretty fun stuff for Mythic. I want to bring that one up there. Oh, yeah. So this was the, the best fight for NIP that they got. This was started off by the Equalizer and then the hook by uh, Mythy across the very thick Baron Wall there. They were able to capitalize and get a lot done. But after they won the fight, there was a little bit of indecision here. They're like, whoa, should we start the Baron up again? Take a little bit of extra damage there. And they didn't get much out of it. Yeah, unfortunately, like, they like started on it, but they had a couple members dead already. And, and the fact that two members of C9E were still alive, I actually kind of want to see the second half of that one because um, yeah, basically they, they stopped the Baron attempt. Like Baron yeah. was at half HP. NIP had started fighting it already. And it was just the two of them kind of coming in there and stopping the entire exchange, getting a kill as well for it. But yeah, C9E, basically the story was, despite all the good early moves by NIP, and in general, like NIP fought pretty well, no objectives could go blue team's way. So, you know, you stopped everything from getting lost. They never go Baron. Very few dragons overall. And just kills were just kills for NIP. Yeah. I also want to point out that Ko did go with that heavy counter jungling style with Shivana with the Feral Flare, and it mm -hmm. worked out pretty well for them. His ganks were definitely uninspiring as he died down bottom. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it still worked out. They had a good game plan, and they executed well. Yeah, well, crowds in the late game. So, guys, that's one Nexus down. At least two more to go. In return, it's time for the rematch between Cloud and Eclipse and the Ninjas in Pajamas.